Lisa, want to do a thumbnail? It's like a preview picture of the video before they actually watch the video. Want to try that? You don't know what a thumbnail is? I just told you. Hey. See, I, I talk telepathically with the dogs. She's like, get out of here. I have enough velocity. Say hi. Let's do a thumbnail. Want to do a thumbnail? Say cheese. Yeah, kind of. No, not really. Dachshunds. Hi Facebook, hi Instagram, hi everybody. So today is kind of exciting because for the last hmm, probably two years I've been getting constant emails and phone calls and X, Y, and Z about this ultrasound tutorial um, for the Great Value Ultrasound Machine because needless to say it doesn't come with explicit instructions. Well, everybody, look no further. Today is the day. Stay tuned. I got my prenatals, I got my water, I got my dog food. All right, all right, chill out, dudes. Guys. Hey, puppies. Just letting the guys out in the morning. Regular routine. And no, they don't stay, they don't sleep outside. Dogs, my dogs don't stay outside. Eating some snacks from yesterday. I had a couple questions that, oh, do you feed your dogs outside? Absolutely. Except if it's winter, then we feed them inside. This is just more convenient this way. I can watch that they all eat as a whole. Um, and it just works out that way. It was the end of the dog food container. I just figured I'll bring the whole thing out here. Got some more from Tractor Supply yesterday. So this here is now a designated dog shit container. And yeah, put it in that box right there. See, we recycle around here. Multi-purpose. So this is the video you have been waiting for. Um, I've been getting tons of requests for this. Um, our patient is gonna be Lisa. Lisa is my four-year-old. Um, black and cream. Say hi, Lisa. Her name's Lisa Marie. Her father's name is Elvis. And no joking. Her father's name is Elvis. He's retired. He lives with Susanna. She knows who she is. Um, but this is Lisa Marie. Um, she's been a good dog. She's the mom of our Scarlet, Charlotte, and Marlet, the puppies that I kept back. And no, I still don't know who I want to keep. <laughs> um, something tells me I'm going to be keeping them all. <laughs> But anyway, um, Mrs. Lisa here, um, she's usually a late ovulator, um, and she usually ovulates between days 14 and 18. Well, this time around, I noticed she was flagging quite early, which is unusual for her. Um, she's had two, three litters before. Um, this, is her this will be her fourth. Yes, this will be her fourth. I have to think about that for a minute. Um, so that's the nice thing about pregnant females. They are so chill. Like, she'll sit here all day if I let her. Um, but she usually ovulates late. She's a, like a, always, I always, the, like the first two heats, I think, I missed her completely. I actually thought she was infertile because I didn't know she was ovulating so late. She's checking me out, isn't she? <laughs> so this time she went early and, uh, she, I, I know you're talking about me. Tell them more about me. <laughs> so this time I noticed she was flagging earlier and I did cy cytology slides like I always do. Um, and I noticed that she was more prime. She had a lot of cells that were showing that she was about to ovulate. Um, and sure enough, um, I checked her on Sunday, which she should have been like two weeks and five days or two weeks and six days. And she already had embryos that were the size of grapes on palpation, um, which tells me she's probably closer to the four week mark. I've been doing this so long, I know the sizes and dates and, and you know, gestational ages of, you know, puppies so um she feels more like closer to the four week mark i bet you when we do her ultrasounds um after all the dogs are done eating and going to the bathroom we're gonna find out she's closer to the four week mark if not over the four week mark because that's actually um the second time she bred 
which was four weeks from Saturday. So this sat coming Saturday will actually be five weeks. Um, so I think she, I think she took on the very first day or the very second day, first or second day we bred her, which is unusual for her, but that's a quite, that's, that's an added surprise. Um, sometimes dogs, you know, they'll do crazy things and they'll turn you into liars and they do that all the time. So today I already know how many puppies she's having, but today I am going to officially tell you how many puppies we're having, what puppies look like at this gestational age and how to confirm pregnancy and also how to use the gestational calculator on your great value ultrasound machine. So this has been a long drawn out process and people have been asking for this video for a very long time. I know it's been a long time coming for this video, so I apologize, but I wanted to make it the most educational and informative video that is on the internet. Um, because when I was looking for tutorials for this ultrasound machine, there was none. And last I checked from certain other people, there still is none. Um, so I hope this helps at least one person, like I say in all my videos, and you welcome in advance. And if you have any questions or comments, put them down and drop them down in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel um, because that tells YouTube we're good people and we're doing everything we should be doing as people and that people actually like our content. So don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and um, here we go with the ultrasound. How's our patient doing? How's our patient doing? She's all ready, doctor. She's all prepped. Say hi. Hi. She is so precious. You are so precious. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. She is the most amazing dog. I love Lisa. Lisa. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. <laughs> okay. To do this properly, the first thing you should do is shave her belly. And that's the part she doesn't like, but that's okay. Now you don't gotta shave her whole belly like a maternity cut. You only have to shave a little bit where, here, let me show you, where you are going to be using the probe. And I find that you can get a better picture if they have a little bit of their belly shaved and there's not hair in the way throwing shadows on your images. So that's your first step. And like I said, you don't gotta go crazy like with a maternity cut where you're shaving their whole belly and exposing all their nipples. That'll be for another video. But you just wanna get a good portion of their belly right here um, shaved so you can Get a good look at those babies. There we go. By the way, this is the cat's behind. I love this. Um, this is a Walt. Um, this is a great uh, cordless battery chargeable. Um, love it. I'll put a link to this in the description box. Love this thing. This will go up to like eight hours on one charge. Um, I think the last time I charged this was probably five months ago. So yeah, love this thing right here. All right, on to the more. All right, so you're gonna shave her belly. This is what you're gonna look at. This is the only part of the belly you wanna shave, okay? She's a little dirty right here. Her nips have a little dirt on them, but um, no big deal. Um, this you can clean off really good before she has her puppies. Some of her nips are already showing and starting to get bigger. Um, for a whole maternity cut, you're gonna to wanna to cut up here, all the way straight down out the back. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut um, some hair off the sides here because when they're giving birth, this back end gets so messy and natted with blood and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I just shave a little bit on each side of her um, privates and then I go all the way up to her two top nipples and kind of go all the way down. By the time the puppies are eight weeks, these are all this is all grown back. Um, but I usually expose all the nipples and make it easier for the newborns to find them instead of trying to, um, you know, go through the, and it's cleaner, uh, it, cleaner after the fact, after they have their puppies, much cleaner to clean up and she's not in an old bloody hairy mess. So, right? Yeah, we talking about you. All right, let's go on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, 
This is the 12 volt great value ultrasound machine. And as this is not the best ultrasound machine on the planet, it basically, um, it, like in my first tutorial or my first review on it, I'll post a link to my review on this machine down in the description box. I have a review on the 12 volt and the 16 volt machines. They're going to be the links for those um, links. The links for those videos are on my YouTube channel, but I will also put them down here in the description box. Um, I think this 16 volt is much better than the 12 volt. Just picture quality is a lot better. And as I said, this ain't the most greatest ultrasound machine on the planet. I actually think it's the most complicated, depending on what you're trying to do. But um, it definitely does the job and tells you what you need to be told. Um, I ain't going to get too far into depth with the review of it or any kind of workings of it um, or my opinions on it because I already did that in the first re the review. This is the tutorial. So it comes with two different probes. This is the convex probe which is basically your half moon shape. And then this is your linear probe. What's the difference between the two of them? Well, this is going to give you a more detailed picture, a vascular picture. Um, this, you can see more um, detail on um, uh, veins and arteries and delicate stuff and small and minute stuff like that. This is your general probe. This is pretty much, you know, you want to see the broad picture. It has a, a broader angle. This is the one we're going to use first. And then I'll go on to this probe so you can see the difference. This is the probe that came with my particular machine and I only got the one with this particular probe because I already had this probe. Because I bought this one by mistake thinking this would fit on the 12 volt and man I was wrong. This is only a 16 volt probe. So I wound up buying a whole new machine and um, I bought the same one just because I knew I already knew the workings of it and I didn't want to have to learn another ultrasound machine. So I got the 16 volt that belonged to this one. So this one was like $800 or so. And then this one obviously came with the machine. But you can get the 16 volt with this probe already. Um, so that was just my own personal mess up. But now I have two different probes and two different options, which is nice. They also have, I think, two other probes that can go with this. They have a rectal probe. That's mainly for your cows and your, your large livestock animals um, to check for pregnancy. And then you have, um, there's a smaller convex probe. It's called a mini convex probe, which this is not. It's basically half the size as this. Um, but for this particular purpose, we're going to use the bigger one. And here we go. Okay, so um, this is the machine. Sticker's coming off already. You know, start it up. You get this cool welcome screen, no probe. Oh yeah, it would help to put a probe on. Stand by. Take two. How you're gonna put these probes on, they're very tricky. See, there's a little slat there. My camera focuses. I don't know if you can see it. See that little tiny slat? It's right here. You're going to want to get that in the crook of the, the slat here. So it's slat side up. Don't force it. You'll break the prongs on your probe. Okay. Take three. Okay. The, the slat goes downwards. Okay. You can actually see it. Maybe not on the probe. But you stick it in there. And it pushes in. Once it pushes in, then you can screw it on tight. Remember, make sure you have this in correctly because the last thing you want to do is bend the prongs on an $800 probe. Because that's how much they cost if you break them. If you happen to forget to put on the probe, restart just like a computer that's missing its mouse or its uh, keyboard. Restart. Alright, we're good now. You're going to get a welcome screen. Now you see these settings up here? All right, so you have, this is going to be the broad range. This is going to be the screen by screen. Um, this one here is going to, one's to monitor heartbeat. This one I think is actually, yep, this is the heartbeat one. This will actually monitor heartbeat. Um, I don't really get, I don't really do much of those with dachshunds. Um, see down here it has the abbreviation. HR stands for heartbeat. Um, I don't get many heartbeats with dachshunds, but hey, today maybe we'll try. We'll see if we can see a heartbeat or not. Um, so you go on your first screen. I always use this. I hardly ever use the side-by-sides, okay? I just 
you can use side by sides if you want to compare, but you don't have to. As a breeder, and just for confirmation of pregnancy and to check on the viability of the babies, this is a tutorial where this is all you're going to need to know as a dog breeder. All these settings here, the frequency is basically your um, settings for, hold on, I can get back to the main screen. Your frequency is basically probably the most important here, and how I get there is by this. All you got to do is push these buttons here. And it, see that? I'll screen out a little bit so you can see. Just keep going. All right, your frequency you're selecting is going to be up and down. This is going to be your frequency. I find the best frequency at about 2.5 for dachshunds. If you need it a little darker, you can go 5.0 um, if you want to see something in more detail. But between 2.5 and 3.5 are the best settings. We're going to do 2.5 for this one. Um, everything else is good. If you want to up the, if you want to up the, um, brightness, you can do that on here, contrast and so on and so forth. The gain is basically the picture, the picture quality. Um, and you can adjust these settings as you see fit, but those are the most important ones. The only ones I really worry about too much is frequency gain and, um, uh, brightness. Um, you can fiddle with those. And like I said, this is how you fiddle with them. This is how you select them. You want to go backwards, go frontwards. That's basically it, folks. So we're going to go here. Now, we are going to squirt her up with some lube. This is the lube I use. Get yourself some ultrasound jelly. If you don't, you can get this on Amazon. If you don't have yourself any ultrasound jelly, you can get lotion. Lotion, regular Johnson's Baby lotion will work. Uh, make sure you get it off of their belly really good with a towel or something or a baby wipe. But this is this doesn't hurt them. This is hypoallergenic, water-soluble. Water so even if they would lick this, if you didn't get enough off of it, it's safe. It won't hurt them. Um, I'm not too sure about the lotion, but just make sure you get as much lotion off of their belly if you're going to use it as possible. I highly recommend just getting the stuff that, you know, you need for the machine. So let's do this. I, this is the position when I'm running solo. This is the position I kind of like dogs to be in when I'm doing their ultrasound. It's kind of like this. So I kind of like to make them comfortable. Usually if it's my husband here, he'll keep them company while, you know, keep them settled while I'm doing the ultrasounds. But she's pretty. She's a pretty laid back, mellow dog. So she pretty much lets me do anything I want. Um, but that's pretty much the position I try to have them in. If you have a more antsier dog or a dog that doesn't want to stay still, then I would probably highly recommend you having a second hand for this. Um, let me get this cord behind my head. Hold on, Lisa. She is getting a little antsy. Alrighty. Get some lube on that belly. Here, get you down here to your head. That'll be a little better. All right, Lisa. How much jelly should I use? Well, that definitely is personal preference. But this is about what whoop, this is about the amount of jelly that I use on them. About two quarter sizes. Um, if your picture quality starts decreasing and it starts to look blurry, just add some more lotion. I mean, that's lotion, either lotion or this. But if it, your picture quality starts decreasing, it means that you're going to have to add more lube. Here we go. First thing you're going to want to do is do one of these numbers, lube up her belly really good. And we'll see what we're going to see. Right away, at about, like I said in before, I thought she was about three weeks. Right away, we see embryos. Let me get closer here. Um, you, the, if you want to zoom in on anything, hold on. Let me get out of this. Hold on. Let me get out of this window. So if anything isn't working correctly, you're always going to want to hit this button right here. So if you're in a setting you're not sure about or you are in like a flux of what's going on or you're stuck over here in the selection bar for some reason, you can't get out and you don't want to mess anything up, just push this button. This will always take you back to the welcome screen. And then just hit this button up here. I just wanted to point that out. All right, here we go. All right, first up, you can get a little closer. I just want to show you guys what 
Let me take this off. There we go. And God said there shall be an image. Okay. All right. Now, see, my image quality is starting to um, decrease already because her belly is dry. So we're going to have to add more lube. Stand by three. All right. All right, here we go. All right, right away. Come on. Okay, there we go. Right away, we can see embryos. Um, right there's one. There's two. And let's see what else here. See if we can get a little closer with the image. That's the only problem with these mach these small portable machines. You can't get that close. With um, more advanced machines, you can get. Um, there we go. It, this button here to focus in, and if you go too far, it'll just go back to where it was. See. Go real far in or real far. All right, hold on, they can't see. There we go, hold it like that. All right, so right here we have two embryos side by side. I can't tell if they're in the same horn or not. It looks like they are. Now, this is as far in as I can go, which kind of stinks with this machine. Like I said, this ain't the bestest machine. Here, move your finger. Um, but it shows you what you need to see. In this little, now if you want to freeze it, up here is the freeze button. If you need to freeze an image, you just push that button. Now, if you want to do gestational age, which we're going to do right now, we're going to hit that freeze button. Okay, now the image is frozen, so you don't have to worry so much about your probe. And we're going to do a gestational age. So, I'm sorry if you hear my kids yelling and screaming downstairs in the background. Um, this is the embryo. That looks about almost four weeks, if I were to guess. You can actually actually see the tiny little um, umbilical cord. Now, down here in the reference box, you're going to hit reference. It brings up this little screen. Now, you know, um, they have swine, sheep, goats, you know, all that kind of stuff. You hit it a second time, and it brings you up this other screen. Okay, it says one, two, three, four, five. So these abbreviations are pretty simple. The only ones you're going to need to know is number two, dog. That's gestation, th that GSD stands for gestational sac dimensions. Number three stands for um, CRL, which is crown to rump length. Uh, four set um is basically head dimensions and um those are the only three you need to know honestly so we are going to since we can barely see an embryo we're going to do um number two which you hit number two on here all right and it brings up this little screen here okay well chrissy how do you measure so this is what you do hit that little box see how it puts a cross guide your cross all the way up your screen. Go to the edge of that sack. Right there is about the edge. Then you're going to push measure. Okay? You're going to take the little cursor and you're going to go cross with it. And see how it measures it? Alright. So now we're going to do an another one. It already gives us a date. Didn't I tell you? Four weeks, three days. That's gestational sac dimensions. You can put another one in. Same button. Number two. All right. I try to get it as close to the outline of the sac as possible. And then you hit measure again. And you drag with this button up here. You drag it to where you want it. And those... If you do it cross in a cross, it gives you the most accurate dimension. So this sack is 14 millimeters in, in diameter, 
It gives us a gestational age of four weeks and zero days, and it gives us a due date of 11 one which her original due date, from my calculations, wasn't until four, day, four days after that. It was like the 5th of November. So this is actually telling me that she's due sooner, which I already suspected because I already said in the beginning of this video, I thought her babies felt a lot bigger to me. So to give you a size comparison, these, um, these babies right now are about the size of grapes. So if I was palpating her right now, the babies are about this big. If you were to feel them, they are un, they are, they're, they're very distinguishable. So it, you wouldn't be able to, um, confuse it with a piece of intestine or a piece of poop in the colon or anything like that. They're very distinctive. So this little mass here, little gestational sac, is about the size of a grape at 14 millimeters, excuse me, and at four weeks. And that's exactly where she is. So I can expect puppies sometime, I would say, probably between October 30th and, um, you know, shortly thereafter. But these, with the calculations on these machines for dachshunds, I have found that they are most accurate between the weeks of four to five weeks. If you go past five weeks, dachshunds grow slower, even in utero. So the numbers will be off after five weeks. So the best time to use this machine if you're doing a dachshund's measurements for gestational age is between four and um, five weeks. If you go after five weeks, the numbers are just going to be skewed. So this here is the best time to check your gestational age. And she's right on the money. And let me snapshot this because I'm going to post this on our Instagram tonight and our Facebook. Gotcha. All right. So now we have that. Now, if you want to exit out of that, all you got to push is this button right here, clear. That takes all that away. Now, we still have the image frozen. So now what we want to do is we can do crown to rump measurements. And since we have a visible embryo, we are going to do that. So we go back to the same thing. Go back to the reference button. Brings up your menu. Hit the reference button again. It brings up the second menu. Go. We're going to go to C... CRL, which is number three. So on the pad, we're going to hit number three. All right. And that brings up our crown to rump length menu. And if you're, you have an ultrasound machine like this, just do this step by step. And you're going to like catch on to this really quickly. If you just do this step by step, like I'm showing you, you're going to have no problem catching on to this. So the next step you're going to want to do is since we already have the screen up, you're going to want to put a cross. So hit number two use your cursor all these ways so you're going to go up drag the cursor all the way up and i would say the puppy's butt let me see the puppy's butt is probably about right here because this little tiny string right where my the x is is looks like either part of the sac or it's umbilical cord i would guess it's probably umbilical cord so i'm going to say that's probably the butt and then i'm going to click measure okay hit that button you won't see anything right away until you start dragging it with the cursor drag it okay drag it and like i said you can go this way this way this way you can move it all around all right and try to position it where the head is and that's about where the head is all right that's crown to rump length and we're still getting a measurement in about four weeks and it's giving us yeah it's giving us the same dates. Now this one here is a little screw, screwy. No, it's it's the same. So it's basically two days sooner. So I can expect puppies. So the crown to rump measurements, doctors say, are always the most accurate. So between the 30th and the 1st, I'll go between. This is me personally. You can do what you want. But I usually take um, whatever the crown to rump measurement is and whatever the gestational sac measurement is if they're two different dates even if it's like two days apart I go as that as my due date so that says 10 30 and the first and the sac said um, 11 1 so I'm going to expect puppies between the 30th and the first um, so this pu this puppy right now is 10 millimeters long at um, four weeks two days that's about the size so that's like it's about the size, it's like uh, five centimeters, about five centimeters long, give or take. Um, but that is your four-week-old 
ducks and embryo. Right now at this stage, they basically look like a fish. If you were to cut this sack open and do an autopsy per se and look in the sack, you would see a little embryo with eyes, little um, arms just starting to bud. Um, you would see like they would still have kind of like a fish tail that will turn into a tail. They pretty much look like any other embryo at this age. There's nothing to distinguish them from being a dog or any other animal. It's about in a week or so that they start um, noticeably um, growing a um, muzzle. You can start to see more distinctive canine characteristics right now. If you would look at this puppy in real life, this would just look like any other embryo you've seen a hundred times on from any other animal. And they don't start to look like puppies until about the fifth to sixth week. So looks like she's right on target. I hope, I hope this tutorial showed you how to do the crown to rump measurements. Um, because that's basically it right there. I just showed you twice. Now if you want to clear that, you clear that. All right. Now you want to go back to a regular image. You just hit this again. Or no, you unfreeze it. Okay, now we're completely unfrozen, and we're going to start scanning again. Okay. Yeah, I think that's one puppy. That's two puppies. That one there you can see in the sack. That one's nice and defined. Let me see if we can see a heartbeat. Let's see if I can get skilled enough to see a little flicker. Don't move, Nathan. Yup. Very slight. I don't even know if you can see it. It's so tiny. It looks like we have two viable puppies. And I always cross-confirm my scans with um, a palpation. So after I scan them, I always palpate them as well to make sure I'm only feeling three. I mean two, I'm sorry. I see two puppies. There we go. Yep. So if you're using this for the first time and your dog's around four weeks along, this is what you're going to see to confirm pregnancy. You're gonna to wanna to see a distinctive round sack. It'll look like this with something resembling a fish in the middle of it, like that. Now, if you see a big, um, she, her bladder's empty, but if you see a big black mass that's down towards their pelvic area a little bit, don't confuse that with a sac. That is just their bladder. Remember, fluid will look black on ultrasound. Always does. That's why you can see these sacs so well. Okay? Let me see what else we can see. This one is on the... This one here is on the um, the side I'm scanning. The other one's on the other horn. So she's got one in each horn, it looks like. Because I can see this one very distinctly. So this is like, this one here is right underneath my probe. So that's what a pregnancy at four weeks looks like, guys. That's what you're going to be looking for in your canines. With that said, let's try the other probe and I'll show you the difference in picture quality. All right, I got the other probe on now. She's laying on her side, which is fine. I can still scan her while she's laying on her side. A bunch of other settings for this. You can, um, and if I wanna go back to regular normal, I go just to that, and back, back to the welcome screen. And like I said, anytime you're stuck in a program that you're not really sure how to get out of, just hit that, it'll take you right back every time. Um, there are settings in here where you can save images. There are other things that you can do with it. Um, I don't use any of that. I just use this for confirmation of pregnancy, which is which is what I suspect that it's the only thing that you want to use it for. So um, there's a bunch of other things that you can do with this. Um, you can do heartbeats with this. Um, I don't because that's not really as important to me. And like I said, this gives you a, a more detailed picture of the pups. And there's your embryo. And if you look really closely, there's your 
here's your heartbeat. And I'm sorry for the in and out of my camera. It, trying to get it to focus and staying focused is the hardest part. There it is. See that tiny little heartbeat? Isn't, isn't life amazing? That right there, my friends, is a four-week-old puppy. Dachshund puppy. In the uterus. Nathan, hit the freeze button. Okay. I'll take a picture of that. That is the most detailed picture I've ever gotten with a dachshund on this machine. Truly. That is a really amazing picture. All right. Um, actually, while we're doing this, like I said, this is a convex probe now. We are going to hit reference. I'm going to measure the puppy because I get a more. I'm going to do crown the rump. So we're going to hit number three, which is up here. We're going to drop the cross. You'll see it puts the cross down. Ah, shit. I lost my kit picture. I messed up. All right, let's go back to it. All right. When I tell you, Nathan, just hit three. Uh, just hit freeze. Hold on. Looks like he's holding on to his placenta. All right, hit freeze. All right, unfreeze for a minute. I want to show everybody this. There's a little heartbeat. Isn't life amazing? No matter how much I do this, you have no idea what's going on, going on inside your dogs until you take a look. Within a couple days to a week, this puppy will be bouncing around and moving. He's not really moving yet. But isn't life just amazing, people? You can see the little eyes. You actually can see a tiny little yolk sac. Life is just amazing. All right, now freeze it. All right, so we're going to measure this puppy. Hopefully I don't mess it up this time. We're going to hit reference, hit it twice. I'm going to do crown to rump length, which is number three. Drop the X. Move the X all the way up here. This part here is definitely the head. And we're going to hit measure. Hope by doing this a couple times, you guys will know how to do this. That's pretty much the rump there. And it gives me the same date, about four weeks and two days. So. Take a picture. All right. So that's the linear probe. And as you can see, it gives you a much detailed picture um, if you want to get, you know, really close and not just diagnosing. That is just, that is the most, I'm, I'm shocked. This is the first time I've used this, this 16 volt machine. Hold on, let me, this is the first time I've used this 16 volt machine on any of my dogs. I've always been using the 12 volt machine and I've never gotten pictures this, this good. Um, this is another reason why I say the 16 volt is better than the 12 volt just in picture quality alone. Um, and probe selections. You have more than one probe you can use. So there you go. That's absolutely incredible. I've never got a picture that close up of a puppy before. Um, so, wow. I I'm like impressed. I just impressed myself. All right. So we'll unfreeze it for right now. And we'll just scan. Let's make sure that we only see two. If you want to clear anything that's still on your screen, all you got to do is hit clear. Or if it doesn't clear it, just hit that button and then go right back to it. Now, when you're switching between probes, make sure you shut your machine off and then change probes. It's just like a computer when you, like, 
Don't put a mouse on before your computer starts up. Sometimes it don't recognize it. This can be the same way. Okay, that's one puppy. There's two puppies. I see something that might have been like a sack, but it's just not growing. Like it's right there. But that could be a part of the intestine too. Alright, they both have heartbeats it looks like. And honestly, I, in my opinion, I think it looks like one. she's got one in each horn. So I see two for sure. Two puppies. It's down here. See the, what's down here? Oh, we might have a third. There might be a third down here. Sure looks like it. Do you see what I'm seeing? Let me look at the other two to make sure I'm not just getting the back end of a sack. There's one. One, two, and go right down the center. One, I think I might see three. Hmm. Always surprises for Miss Lisa. I'm going to say two for now. Possibly three because I see something down here that I can't quite. It's like just behind her bladder. And it's definitely with a sack. Hold on, this is getting blurry again. It definitely has a sack. That's intestine. One, two. Yeah, it looks like she's got one on each side. And then something down here. Yeah. Looks like three. All right, well, I guess we'll scan her next week to see. One, one, hmm. I'm going to say two, possibly three at this point. So that's your puppy count. I hope this video um, helped somebody and I hope you enjoyed. All right, everybody. I hope that at least helps at least one person. I know I say that so much in all my videos, but it's true. That's the whole reason why I do these videos is to help somebody else. Back when I was first um, started to breed dogs, I <laughs> we were still relying on MySpace, okay, and forms and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. People do that all the time, but um, it's nice to have somebody with personal experience that can talk you through there 
things and like a mentor. So if I could be your video YouTube mentor, I feel honored and privileged, okay? One more thing I would like to add to this video before I end it is I want to talk about palpation. Because before I started doing ultrasounds, I did a lot of palpation on my dogs. Palpation is basically when you physically go up into their stomach and you actually feel for the embryos. Now, at this stage, at this particular stage in the game, about four weeks, docs and embryos are about the size of a grape. So imagine um, in the produce department at your local grocery store what an uh, average size green or red grape would look like. That's about, about the mass you're going to try to feel for at four weeks from last week breeding or four weeks till you think she got pregnant from conception okay so I would like to show you how to do that safely and by no means if you don't feel comfortable doing anything I just told you or showed you please do not and go to a licensed veterinarian and get care and get your dog examined but if you want to try and you don't feel intimidated by anything I just said Good luck, and if you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment box, or any suggestions that I can add to this video later on in other videos, let me know. I am happy and willing to look at any suggestions anybody has, because this channel isn't just for me. This channel is for you guys, too. That's the whole point of making the channel. There's not a lot of breeders on here who actually have content that's educational. Um, trust me, I've looked, and... Um, it's one of those things where I want to be unique and I want to be out there and in your face. Um, and if you're looking for what I'm showing, I can be just a click away. So, and also to kind of break that stereotypical stuff around breeders that all breeders are bad and we're all after money and we're all after this and that and the other thing. No, that's only a selective few. I could probably name 10 off the top of my head in 14 years that I could put in that category, but I assure you not all of us are and I am not one of those. So with no further ado, here's um, a little more on palpation. So for this, I'm actually going to turn the light on, shed some light on the subject. So palpation's pretty easy. Lost my camera boy, so bear with me. All right. So for palpation, Lisa's really tired. I won't, I won't torment you too much. So for palpation, you can do this one out of two ways. You can palpate her from laying on her side. That's totally possible if she doesn't want to stand. Or you can stand her up and palpate her. Um, so I'll show you how to do it this way first. So when you're palpating from the side and she's laying on her belly, what you're going to do is you're going to put your hands in a C type pattern like this. Okay. And you're going to want to like go in here and you're going to do it gently. You're not going to go, uh, you know what I mean? So you're going to go gently. You're going to feel a bunch of stuff, mostly intestine, but at four weeks gestation, th these are undeniable masses. You can see them. You can oh, not see. Oh my God. See them cut. You can feel them, okay? Um, like right here is one of them, right here distinctly. I can feel it. One, two. They're the size of a grape. They're about that big. Um, I put my fingers on, I can feel them right away. There's no question. So it's one, two. I feel one down by her bladder towards the exit door. Um, hold on, lay down, baby. Um, let's see, what else can we see here? And if she yips or cries or anything like that in pain, please just stop. Um, if you're doing this correctly, she shouldn't be in any pain or discomfort. Um, plus, she's so used to this getting done. <laughs> she's going to be. All right, our video got cut off. So we were prior to our video getting cut off. We were looking at Miss Lisa here. She's sleeping through this, by the way. So you're going to feel for... And like I said, at this stage, they're very distinctive. So I feel like right off the bat, one, two, and I f I'm going to try to feel for what I've seen on the ultrasound machine down low. And I feel that one too. Three. She's got definitely three. Yep. Three. For sure. Um, another way you can palpate. You want to stand, Miss Lisa? 
I'm not going to make her if she doesn't want to. Okay, she's going to stand. So you're going to do the C cup again with your hands, and you're just going to palpate gently. And if you can't feel them when she's laying down, this, if you, you have her stand up, this will bring the, the uterus down. Gravity will bring it down. And you could feel them even more distinctly. You don't even have to press. I'm like, it's like right there at the tip of my fingers. I can feel at least one embryo right here. Say hi, Lisa. So you can do either way. Um, I definitely can confirm three puppies. Yes, hi, Lisa. One, I actually went back on the ultrasound machine when my um, phone died. And I went to go measure the one that I thought i seen down here. I basically just measured the sac because I couldn't really see the baby really well. It's like on the back wall of the uterus, opposite of where I'm trying to scan it. So it's a little harder to see. But it looks like the sac is only two days behind the other two sacs. Like when you're, when, when it, we're talking dogs, we can go from barely visible to, oh, hello, overnight. That's how fast these guys grow. I mean, dogs are only pregnant for 63 days from start to finish, from conception to birth. That's only nine weeks. That's pretty fast. So it's like every week is an equivalent to a month for them. Um, so, you know, so every few days is equivalent to, you know, a week for them in, in human, in human gestational ages. So that's a huge, you know, time gap, you know, what do you think? You ready to have three more? She had three, her last litter. So three is her average. The most she's ever had is five. Her first litter, she had five. Her second litter, she had three. Her third litter, she had three. So she's having three again. By the way, girls usually always repeat their heats. I mean, their heats. Oh my gosh. Take five. <laughs> um, dogs usually always repeat their history. So if a dog consistently has a certain number of puppies, that's usually what they do for the life of them. Um, well, I have noticed for cream dachshunds is they'll have, sometimes they'll have a really big litter the first and second time. And then the rest of their life, it'll like start to like die down. Like they'll have three and then maybe four, maybe two, then three. Just something I distinctly um, noticed in creams. So just keep that in mind. Girls will always repeat their history normally. That's why you don't usually breed a dog that has reproductive problems because that can be inherited. And then the, mo the not only the moms, but the daughters can have problems down the line. Um, I would definitely never um, breed a dog that was a product of a cesarean section. Um, depending on what the cesarean section was for, um, like if it was failure to progress or stuck puppies or anything like that. I'm not talking French bulldogs or that kind of stuff where they're or uh, they have too big of heads and they can't be born. We're not talking about those kind. We're talking about just natural birth that can't happen. So I definitely wouldn't get a puppy that was a product of a C-section for failure to progress because that puppy that you take back can have that problem too. So um, I guess that's it. That concludes this video. This has been a long awaited video. So please share this video with anybody that you need to share it with. Miss Lisa says she approves this video. She's been a good sport. She's one of my good, better dogs. She's just well-natured. And I also think age is calming her down a little bit. I mean, she just turned four and that's not really old for a dog. In fact, she's still a baby, but um, she definitely, between one and four, you can definitely notice the temperament shift. And I think that's with all dogs. They go through this teenage phase and then they like start to calm down a little bit and become, you know, more civilized. <laughs> you know, don't chew your whole house up all at once. Say hi, Lisa. <laughs> She's a great dog. And anybody who gets her puppies is going to be immensely lucky. We have three girls from her. Um, and um, a couple other people have puppies from her and they're very happy. So, say Lisa. All right. Well, this concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Um, we are. You can also find us on Facebook, uh, Major Stocksons on Facebook, and you could also find us on um, Instagram. And from Lisa, we will see you later. Bye, everybody. Hi. All right. So there was one last thing I thought of when I was just putting this video together to post it on YouTube. And I think it's important because there's more than one person that has asked me about it. So I'll touch on it briefly. 
but I'll mention it in other videos because this ain't going to be the last video on ultrasounding. Ultrasounds. <laughs> so on the side of each of these, the 12 volt and the 16 volt, there is a video jack. What's that for? So if you have a TV that still has audio video jacks, you can get a regular standard. I don't know what's I got bit by something under my lip. Oh well. So you can get yourself um, a standard audio jack or a video jack. You just need the video side. Um, your jack is going to look like this. Hold on, let me find it. That'd be great. It's going to look like this. And it's going to be a double ended, so it's going to be a double male. It's going to be a double male on both sides. That's what you're going to want. I don't know if this will focus. That's what you're going to want. You, I think you can still get them at Walmart, Best Buy, all those places. Target probably has them. Um, they aren't obsolete yet. Um, so they that will go in there. And then if you're lucky enough to still have a TV that has audio video jacks, you put the video jack in the back of your TV. Um, what you're going to do is you're just going to go standard protocol for your TV. Um, if you want to watch anything that's off of the TV, you're going to put your um, video setting on for your, your video output or video input or whatever it is on your TV because all TVs are different. So I figured I'd just mention that because I didn't touch on that. I was trying to go over everything and make sure I, I touched on everything that everybody's asked me, but that was one of them that I didn't touch on. So I just wanted to throw that in there quick. But, um, yeah. Um, and basically what that does is it will um, give your um, your image a blown up. I'll show you what I mean quick. Okay, I'm going to show you how this gets hooked up. I'm going to use the uh, video jack from my Nintendo. Don't judge me. This is plugged into the back of my TV into the video jack. You plug it here into your ultrasound machine. That's it on the ultrasound machine's part. Now all you gotta do is turn it on. Once you turn it on, this is the image it should give you. Technical difficulty. Wait one. All right, I tried it. It didn't want to work for me this time, but it's okay. It's late. It's like four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. I don't know. I've been up for hours editing this video. Um, but basically, you take your audio jacks, you plug them in here, plug them in the back of your computer, make sure your input and output settings are correct so it displays on your TV. Turn it on. Now, when you have it in video mode, um, um, video mode for your TV, it will still display two different displays. It will still display on here, and but it will also give a larger picture on there. Now the picture on the TV is gonna be a little diluted, so it's gonna be a little more fuzzier because you're making a, a little screen like this so much bigger. Um, this is basically for display purposes only, in all honesty. Um, the only reason I would hook up my ultrasound machine to a bigger TV um, when my kids were little, they were fascinated by it. They loved to see the ultrasound machines and we couldn't all crowd around a little monitor like this. So it was always nice to have an audio video cable to put to there. Now this doesn't have no audio, okay? So if you do heartbeats or, or anything like that, you won't hear a audio. You just see a visual. Um, same thing with the TV. You won't hear no audio. It's all visual. Um, so you'll just see an image. Like I said, the image on here is a little more diluted than it is on the screen. I would still always use the screen as a diagnostic tool. This is more for entertainment purposes only when you hook it up to a TV. Um, and, you know, so nobody, a uh, hundred people aren't gathering around a little monitor if you have a, a little audience at home. So um, that's basically how it works. It's like the old days. Anybody who grew up in the 80s and 90s know what audio, audio video jacks are. It's really that easy. Um... So if you have any questions or comments or anything I didn't touch on in this video, please leave them in the comment section of this video. What would you like to see for other videos or anything else that your little heart desires? 
please let me know. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.